Alright, how you doing? So today is going to be a bit of a different video. I'm going to be talking about something that is probably been quite cover commonly covered on YouTube. Um, but I thought, out of my own uh, experiences and experiences from what people have told me, I'm going to be going over some of the very basic but extremely irritating things people that don't have mental health sort of come across to people with mental health. Now, what I mean by that is um, questions I'll ask, um, being incredibly irritating. And then, as well, those that think you can just instantaneously, instantaneously get over it. So, that's what we're going to go over today. Uh, I shouldn't imagine it will be a very long video. And I've just kicked my biscuits over. Fuck. I shouldn't say the F word, actually. I might get demonetised, even though I'm not actually monetised. <laughs> Okay, so, one of the very first ones um, is, comes from, an. I don't know how common it is with the rest of you that have mental health, and please don't take anything I'm about to say as it's the same for everyone, because it's really not. Everyone's experiences can differ, this is just what my experiences have been and what people have told me um because despite having a very low uh view channel uh with a very small amount of subscribers people do contact me uh once they've seen the video okay so the first one i want to cover is when People repetitively ask you what's the matter. This one I have experienced quite a few times. Uh, there's been times I have been that low I haven't wanted to communicate with anyone. I've just simply isolated myself and that is it. Um, and sometimes I've had people messaging me saying, come on, what's the matter? What's the matter? I don't know. That's what I'll reply. And they're like, you've got to know. You've got to know. Surely, think about it. What is it? What is the matter? And it's just like, you want to, especially with me, I feel this rage boiler where I just want to go, well, you jog on. But I ain't that kind of person, so I don't. Um... I don't quite understand why people try to dig so deep into these questions and want to know something that, in the person that's going through its mind, they might not actively know yet. There is a truth to behind some cases of mental health issues where you can be incredibly down or worse, like, severely down, but have no idea why. Um, it may have been something very small that you haven't actually figured out yet. It could have been a dream that you've then forgotten, but the effects are still there. And I get them quite a lot through dreams. I get some very nasty nightmares with complex PTSD. Um, unfortunately, they happen. I have learned to pretty much live with it now, but there are them few that can slip the net and be the worst of the worst. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So, people will and have repetitively said, what's the matter? Come on, tell me. Surely you got to know. And it's just like, you may be an outsider to this, but think of 
the person that is going through it for the time being before you repetitively ask them what the problem is. They may tell you, it may take a few hours, it may take half an hour, it could take a few days. Um, but they may just not know yet. Or they don't want to talk about it just yet because they're that feeling that low about it. They need their time to elevate back up. Okay, that's that one. Um, the second one is probably the biggest trigger, one of the biggest triggers, should I say, to anyone suffering from mental health problems. Again, it doesn't matter whether it's just depression or whether you're a schizophrenic. Either one, it doesn't matter. Um, wherever you are in that line, this is one of the biggest triggers. And it is people that do not have mental health issues that think someone with mental health issues can just get rid of it like it's a cold. They're like, oh, it's all in your head. It's something you can get over. Whatever the trigger is, untrigger it. It doesn't quite work like that. Um, and I have, found, I have had it said to me so many times before, and it is one of the biggest things that annoys the living hell out of me. And I have had words with these people that have said it to me and they still live by the same assumption. You can get over it. It's easy to get rid of. No, it's not. It will never go. Uh, I believe clinical depression can go, I think. It's one that doesn't hang around, but then you've got the likes of, you know, complex PTSD, bipolar schizophrenia, anxiety disorders. They won't go. You can tackle them. You can put them into a coping stage by um, CBT, the psychiatric assessments and counselling and medication, but it will never ever go once it's in the brain it's there to stay sadly but it doesn't mean it'll ruin your life because it won't so if you are someone that doesn't have mental health issues that is looking into someone with mental health issues take a moment to think about what that person is going through because they can't necessarily help it and you saying you can just get rid of it, it's alright, just get over it. And the biggest one, man up. Oh. I admittedly nearly attacked the last person that told me to man up from mental health issues. Um, it boiled my blood beyond belief. Um... So, yeah, but there is one thing I will say to you guys. Don't let mental health defy your life. You are who you are. Mental health doesn't rule you. It doesn't live as you. You are still yourself. So, just remember that. Um... I'm just trying to think of what the some of the others are now. I did have them written down, and I can't find the sheet of paper that did it that I did it on. Um, so one thing that is very common within people that don't have mental health issues, they will look at you like you've you're just nuts if. You're talking about your problems and um, your, uh, your state of mind. And don't get me wrong, not everyone. Um, I should highlight that ex like 
capital letters underline whatever not everyone that doesn't have mental health issues will do this just the what i like to call the arrogant few um so they will look at you like you belong in a padded cell looking at licking windows that's how they treat you they don't perceive you as a generalised human being. And it is one of the nastiest things them few people can do. Because you are still you. You are still just as important, just as human as they are. Um, and you are still wonderful and one of a kind. So, don't let them treat you like you're something you're not. Because you're not. Simple fact. <laughs> to be honest, I'm more surprised I managed to go the last 11 minutes talking without stuttering and losing my words astronomically. Because that's normally what happens. Uh, um, yeah, um... I think for now that's all I can get my brain to remember. What I am going to do is find that sheet of paper and carry on on a part two video. So for now guys, take it easy, enjoy your bank holiday weekend and if you're watching later on, I don't know, in years to come, it is... Um, the April bank holiday weekend, so yeah, I'm filming this video on a Friday afternoon, the sun's out, it's a lovely day, and I've been out more times than I can count today. Um, so, I am going to do a follow-up on this video as a part two in the next, I don't know, the next week or two. I'm also going to be releasing a video... Um, based off the pros and cons from my own experience of CBT, which is Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Um, and I'm going to outline the good side and the bad side. Um, so, if you want to see more of the videos, please subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Ta-da for now.